So for the area um, formula, we got A equals the area, uh, use the polar region, A equals half of A and A to beta, and uh, gamma theta square and d theta. Okay. Right, so uh, we look at several example yesterday. We look at a circle, a um, a rose curve, three paddles, and also um, another, pretty much like a sh uh, circle shape. So today we're gonna look at one more. I think this is another example. Yeah, two more example maybe. Okay. So the first example continue. Find the area of the region between two curves. Okay. Um, the first one is r equals negative six cosine theta, and r equals two minus two cosine theta. Okay, so we want to find the area between these two. So how are we going to find the curve between these two? Let's see. Find the area of the curve between two regions, yeah. Let's graph this one. Let's graph this picture. Mm. Polar curve. Okay, I have it. So I can graph it. Okay. I also, you always have every time you give me so many. So first the equation is r equals negative six, negative six cosine theta. R equals negative six cosine theta. The second one is going to be a circle on the left uh, on the uh, negative of x axis. So second one is um, two minus two cosine theta. So R equals two minus two cosine theta. Okay. So then we're looking at the area of the region between the two curves. So basically we're looking for the curve of this this area. Does it make sense everyone? We're looking at this area. The between the orange curve and this curve and this one. So basically if we graph the picture, we're looking for There's another one here. So this is a circle here. We're looking for the um, for this part, the curve between this one, right? So now, my question is: first, we need to find the boundary point. What is the boundary? Okay. What's the boundary point here? And also, uh, what's the boundary point here? I'll give you one minute to find the boundary of this one. Okay.
all right are you done so i would like to ask a student here so if you what what do you find a boundary of this two point um do you have any volunteer okay i'm just call a student here um matthew could you please tell me do you find the boundary of these two points i did not okay so how do we find the intersection? For example, how do we find the intersection of two curves? For example, if it's x, y, not polar coordinates, but just the x, y function. Normally, how do we find the intersection point? Suppose this is y equals x. Suppose this is y equals square root of x. Now, how do we set? How do how do we find the intersection points? So we basically set up and set them equal each other. Y equals Y. You solve that X. That's how we do the rectangle. The same will apply for the um, polar equation. So just to set up, set up the R equal each other because at this point both will have the same radius. Both will have the same radius, right? So I set up negative sixty cosine negative six cosine theta equals two minus two cosine theta. So I just set up these two equals each other. Then I can solve for cosine theta. Solve for this one, you got negative six cosine theta equals, oh sorry, negative four, because you add both sides by two cosine. So you got a two, so you got a cosine theta equals negative one half. So if cosine theta equals negative one half, then theta will have two solutions, one in the second quadrant and one in the fourth, third quadrant. So second quadrant, cosine theta equals one half. Can anyone tell me what is the theta? Two pi over three. Two pi over three. Very good. Thank you, Eric. So theta equals two pi over three. The other angle on third quadrant is going to be four pi over three, right? So you have the reference angle is pi over three. Second quadrant two pi over three. So we got angle is two pi over three to three pi over three. Uh, four pi over three. Okay. So. If you look at this picture, I think I'm going to draw this one again. Make sure it's more, it's, it looks better. Okay. Oh. The other one. Okay. So I'm looking for the green area here, and uh, then from here to here, the green area actually goes across of this, right? So what? How do I do here? You can see that from two pi over three to four pi over three, I can use the this curve, the second curve. This curve is. Uh, R equals 2 minus 2 cosine. This curve is negative R equals negative 6 cosine. So for for the blue part for the blue part I can use for the blue part I can use this curve but there is another part a small part of the green. You can see there's a green part here right? The curve, this area, actually this, the between the red and the black, this curve, you have the blue and the green one. So first, I find the blue part. The blue part is actually this, right? And then I find the green based on the other curve, based on the red curve. This is the green one. Does it make sense, everyone? So, if you do that, First, find the blue part. The blue one is area. So I can just do um, so a equals since they are symmetric. Since they are symmetric, I can just do from um, from two pi over three to pi. Just do since they are symmetric. You can do two pi over three to four pi over three. It's okay. So you can do a half of that, and uh, first I find it blue one half of the this blue curve, this uh, black curve, two minus two cosine theta. So two minus two cosine theta square. Then the angle is going to be from 
2 pi over 3 2 pi and d theta this is the area uh oh now this one looks better so this is the area of this one oh my bad This is the area of the blue one, okay? From 2 pi over 3 to pi is the area of the blue blue curve. Then I also have a, a small part for the uh, red part, okay? Because that part, the green, the green part, I have another one, okay? So the next one is also half of the red is based on the circle, right? So it's going to be half of the red is going to be pi over 2 to 2 pi over 3. It's from this one to this one. You can see, right? So it's here. So it's from pi over 2 to 2 pi over 3. And then this area is based on the circle. So it's going to be... Um, negative 6 cosine theta square d theta now we just have we can have the a a equals the one half one half because this is half of a so the whole a you can take uh, divide everything by half you just don't have you don't have any half anymore so half 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 cancelled so it's 2 pi over 3 to positive pi 2 minus cosine theta square d theta plus pi over 2 to 2 pi over 3 uh, negative 6 cosine theta square d theta so now we find this one a equals 2 pi over 3 to pi 2 squared is 4 minus 4 cosine plus cosine theta square d theta plus pi over 2 to 2 pi over 3 36 cosine theta square d theta so here we continue a equals 2 pi over 3 to pi you have um, 4 minus cosine theta plus oh I missed a 2 here my bad 2 so it's going to be 8 actually so this is a 4 um, because you have 2 cosine 2 square 2 square is 4 so it's going to be 8 cosine theta the same copy that 4 power reduced formula half 1 plus cosine 2 theta d theta Plus, this one use power reduced formula, pi over 2, 2 pi over 3, and 36 times half of 1 plus cosine 2 theta. So then we do this one, A equals 2 pi over 3 to pi, 4 minus 8 cosine theta, plus 2, 2 plus 4, um, cosine 2 theta d theta plus pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2 and this is going to be 18 plus uh, 18 cosine 2 theta d theta so now you just need to find the area find the antiderivative of each okay find the antiderivative of each of them which is not hard at all so you do one more step I got 2 pi over 3 pi, 2 plus 4 is 6, and then this one gives you minus 8 cosine theta plus 4 cosine 2 theta d theta plus pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 18 plus 18 cosine 2 theta d theta. Okay, so then you just take the antiderivative of this, it's not really hard, and plug pi and 2 pi over 3 into the function. Okay. So in the end, I think the final answer in the end should be equals 5 pi. Okay? That's this one. That's how do you find this one?
if you give if I give you two two curves you need to find out they graph the picture first then you add those two curves uh, at the area based on the boundary point So next, we're going to look at the um, the arc length. Just take one moment. Let me see if I have one more example. Or just okay. So next, we're going to look at the arc length in polar form. Let f be a function uh, whose derivative is continuous. Um, a less than theta less than b. Okay, so the length of the graph of r equals f theta, a curve from theta equals alpha to theta equals beta. Basically, I give you the if the boundary is given, then the s curve is the, the length of the arc length is from alpha to beta square root of f theta square plus f prime of theta square and a d theta okay so you get this s equals from alpha to beta and is r square plus dr over d theta square d theta Okay, so r normal is given, dr or d r, if r is given, then it's a self square plus a derivative square. Okay, and uh, let's look at the um, examples. First, suppose r equals eight, and uh, zero less than theta less than two pi. So r equals 8, everyone knows that r equals 8 is what? Is a circle. Because r is 8, it means radius is 8. Now for the circle, you know the circumference. The arc length of the circumference is c equals 2 pi r equals 16 pi. If I do that circumference formula, right? But now if I do this one, I'm going to use the um, dr equals d theta. So what do we do here? We can do s equals from 0 to 2 pi and the uh, square root of r is 8, so it's 8 square plus dr d theta is no theta, so just 0 d theta. So it's from 0 to 2 pi, 8 d theta. Then this is 16 pi because 8 theta I plug in, right? So next one. What if r equals 4 sine theta and the theta is from 0 to pi can you find the arc length of this one? I'll give you one minute to try it by yourself
Okay. So I'm going to write it out s equals from alpha to beta 0 to pi square root of r square so it's 4 sine theta square plus the derivative of r is 4 cosine square d theta so you get s equals 0 to pi square root of 16 cosine theta square plus sine theta square which is 1 d theta and which is from 0 to pi 4 d theta so the answer is 4 pi you got the same answer everyone okay so this formula is pretty much easier you just use that f plus f prime square okay all right so let's do one more example Number three, r equals eight times one plus one plus cosine theta and is zero less than theta less than two pi. Find the arc length. Find s equals what? Okay. Can you try this one for yourself? Okay, so I'm going to call a student here and see what you got for this one. Uh, Travis, could you please tell me what you got for this one? So is the final answer 32 pi? Um, very close, very close, but let's work it out together. So what do you got for the formula S? So first we'll look at the prime of theta, right? Take a derivative of the r is 8 
sine negative negative 8 sine theta okay then we'll plug the formula so could you please tell me what you got what, how do you set up the formula the, the equation uh, it's from 0 to 2 pi yeah and I put yeah. the square root of 8 plus 8 cosine theta squared very good plus? and then plus negative 8 sine theta squared Continue, please. Then I got a uh, square root of 64 plus 64 cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. How about the middle two? Because it's a perfect square. Yeah. This two. Because it's a perfect square, is a plus b square equals a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, right? So for this yeah. one, I have additional part, which is this one give you this, 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 and the middle two multiple to get is eight times eight, 128 cosine theta. Does it make sense? Yes. Okay, so what you can do actually, you can take the you can take the 64 out. Actually, you have this 64, 64. You can cancel that. It's zero to two pi. You got a 64 plus 64 cosine 64 sine. So it's 64 plus 64 cosine theta square plus sine theta square, and then plus 128 cosine theta, d theta. Okay. So you got 0 to 2 pi, then you got 128, because this can simplify 64 plus 64, this is 1. So it's 128 plus 128 cosine theta d theta. Well, the 128, we can factor 64 out. 0 to 2 pi, 64 times 2 equals 128, so it's 8 square root of 2 plus you c we can just uh, take everything out, okay? So we just go 100, well, 128 times square root of one plus cosine theta, okay? Because 128, 128, you can factor it out, square root of 128, okay? You don't have to do that, but if you take it out, you got, this is uh, eight square root of two, so you got, um, 8 square root of 2 from 0 to 2 pi square root of 1 plus cosine theta d theta well since this is symmetric I think I'm going to do um, this is symmetric I'm going to do from because if you draw the picture this is symmetric so I just do if you, if you draw the picture of this one it's going to be like this Since they are symmetric, okay, since they are symmetric, I just do 0 to pi and multiply by 2. So this one, I can just do it as 0 to pi and multiply it by 2. From 0 to pi, you can see from 0 to pi, the multiply by 2, I got 16 square root of 2, 0 to pi, 1 plus cosine theta d theta. Okay, so up to here, I think there's a little bit of challenge here. So can anyone tell me what you think I... I may need to continue. Can we do the power reduce formula backwards? That's perfect. Who said that? That's a very smart um, move here. Okay. So, um, square of six, 16 square root of 2, we do it backwards because we have a square root here. So we do it backwards. I need a, I need to divide it by 2. So it's 1 plus cosine theta and divide it by 2 the multiple by 2 okay then what I have is equals 16 square root of 2 from 0 to pi plus this 2 you can take it out because it's separate multiplication so you got 1 plus cosine theta over 2 multiplied by square root of 2 outside d theta because it's a multiplication it's 
minus x square root of 2 times 3 equals square root of 2 times square root of 3. That's no problem. You can separate the square root of 2, right? Square root. So then, this y is coefficient. You can multiply it out. It's 32, 0 to pi, square root of 1 plus cosine theta over 2, d theta. So now, if I use this, uh, if I use the power reduced formula backwards, so can anyone tell me what this will be? Sine squared of theta over 2. Uh, is it sine or cosine? Cosine. Cosine, very good. Thank you, Eric. I think it's Eric, right? I didn't see very clear. So it's cosine, thank you very much. So it's cosine theta of 2 squared. So 32 pi and the square root of cosine theta of 2. That's a very smart move here. Cosine theta of 2 squared d theta. So now square and square root cancel out. You have 32 from 0 to pi. It's just a cosine theta of 2. I don't have any square root. Okay. Now, I would like to ask a student What's the antiderivative of cosine theta of 2 here? Okay, I'm going to ask a student here. Uh, Bella, could you please tell me what is the antiderivative of cosine theta of 2? So it's, um, it's a negative or positive? Oh, um. Positive theta of 2. And do I have anything else? I know you got cosine theta, d theta equals sine theta plus c. Right? That's no problem. Because we have the boundary, we don't have to worry about the c. But if I got a cosine 2 theta, d theta, the answer would not be just a cosine, just not be, would not be just a sine 2 theta plus c, right? Because you have a 2 here. So this one will be divided by 2, right? A chain rule. If you take the derivative, if you take a derivative of sine 2 theta, you would get cosine 2 theta and multiply by the derivative inside, which is 2. So to do any derivative, you have to divide it by the coefficient. So here, I would still have to divide it by 1 half. And then plug 0 and pi into it. So plug pi into here, so it's going to be 1. So it's 64. Minus plug 0 into here, it's just a 0. So the final answer is 64. Okay. That's how you uh, work on this, um, the arc length of this problem. I think we, everyone should be okay with the, um, the formula set up as the S equals square root of R square plus R prime square and D theta from alpha to beta. Okay. Everyone should be fine with that so far. You apply this formula to find the arc length. So next one, we're going to continue working on the one more formula of the um, polar equation, which is the uh, the area of a surface revolution. Next, uh, next year when I'm teaching this course, I'm going to make this chapter just right after chapter 7 because they are very similar things. Just use two different formulas. Okay. So theorem, if f is a function whose derivative is continuous, let f be a function, let just f be a continuous function. Because we're going to take the derivative, antiderivative, so we must have f be continuous. Um, theta less than alpha less than beta. f is continuous. Okay. The area formed by revolving the graph. Theta, which is 
r is cosine theta, sine theta r is a function of theta from alpha to beta. From this two angle, we revolve it about indicated line. So previously, we revolve it about x-axis or we revolve it about y-axis, vertically or horizontally. We can do two ways to revolve a curve, right? But now, we don't have a rectangular coordinate system. We don't have polar system. So we're going to do it a different way. But it's just, uh, essentially, it's still the same x direction or y direction. But it's just a different way to say it. First one is s equals 2 pi from alpha to beta, 2 pi r, you know that, right? f theta, which is 2 pi r. And then, times sine theta, okay, times square root of f theta square f theta square plus f prime of theta square d theta okay so basically 2 pi r times sine theta times r square plus r prime square you can tell this part is just the curve the, uh, the arc length right this part is 2 pi r times h. Why is it like that? Let's look at this. This is actually revolved with respect to polar axis. Why is it like that? Because let's look at this one. If you want to, if you want to revolve uh, this curve with respect to polar axis, this one, this way, you're gonna have revolve it like this, right? So, it's going to be like this. Now we're looking for the area of the surface area, so like pretty much like this one. Right? So pretty much like adding a lot of surface area like this. So, if you take look at this one, this suppose this is zero. This is the um, center. This is the uh, the point, the center point. Start from here to here. We're looking on the middle red this region here, this red shaded region here. We want to look at the air. This one. If you zoom it, if you zoom it, it's going to be like this, like this, right? Okay. So, but if you look at this one, you have. It's 2 pi r times 2 pi r times h. If it's really small, it's pretty much like a uh, cylinder. If it's small, if it's small, it's going to be like a, a cylinder like this, right? If it's small, it's pretty much like a cylinder. If that r is small, if this is very, very, very small. So now, what we do is 2 pi r h. What is r for this one? What is the r for this circle, for the red circle here? The r is actually this part, this is the r. Because this is a circle, right? The r is this one. So r is the vertical line, this is the r. And we, can, we know that, I mean small r, not the, the polar r, but the r of the, uh, the circle. Okay, R of the circle, not the radius R. So the radius is this. This is your radius R equals F theta. But then the 2 pi R H, 2 pi times F theta, sine theta, why do I multiply this by sine theta? Because R sine theta, this is a theta. R sine theta is the R for, maybe I just use a big R. It's the radius for the circle. Right. This one is a radius for the circle. If you draw the picture out here, 
and it's going to be like this. This is the big R. The big R is the big R is a circle is a set a, a, the radius of the circle. But this R is just a R times sine. If you take it out, you have this is R, and this is the R. This is a theta. This is a radius. This is the uh, polar length. Okay, the the length of the radian. Okay, the polar R. So r times sine equals the radius. So that's why we have two pi times sine, two pi times f theta. This is the um, r equals f theta. Two pi times f, okay, r equals f theta. Times sine is the radius here, okay, because two pi times the radius is the circumference, the circumference of this one, and uh, we got the circumference. Then we multiply by by the small change of uh, the length of this one here. This is the arc length, 2 pi r times h. You know that? So if you got this one, if you bring it down, the cylinder, the area, it's going to be 2 pi is the circumference times the h. So it's 2 pi r times h, right? This h is just uh, this length. The s here is your h, right? So now this part we know that from the previous one you know this one the uh, the f theta square plus f prime of theta square is this this h here and then d theta take the antiderivative is the surface area. Does that make sense, everyone? Okay. Okay. So it's two pi f times sine theta is the circumference of the this circle. The circumference multiplied by the h is the area, surface area. Surface area take the antiderivative from gamma to beta. From this is a, a, a gamma to a next one, so we take the antiderivative of this one, it's going to the surface area. Okay. So next one, another formula is s equals 2 pi from alpha to beta f theta cosine theta square root of f square plus f prime of theta square just keep it theta here and d theta so for this one is theta equals pi over 2 theta equals pi over 2 which is the vertical way polar axis polar x axis is horizontal way is it's pretty much like x axis theta equals pi over 2 is pretty much like y axis vertically right so this way is another way you, you can draw it yourself, you can uh, do that one yourself. It's going to be 2 pi times r cosine theta. Because if you draw a picture, well, I think I do this. So now you revolve it this way. If you revolve it this way, you're going to have something like this going to here and it should be symmetric like this but now you're yeah, looking for the middle area of this one you can see for this one suppose this is your theta then if you draw a picture this is going to be a theta because you draw a picture like this, like this, and this. If this is a theta, then this is a theta, right? So if this is a theta, I'm looking for this radius here. The radius of the circle, so this one, the middle circle, the red circle. It's going to be the f. This is r equals f theta. So it's f theta. This is adjacent of the theta here. So it's f theta times cosine theta. Okay? So it's 2 pi f times cosine, which is the circumference of the circle. And then multiply by the uh, radi multiply the arc length, which is the area, surface area. Take any derivative. Okay. So let's look at an uh, example. Example. R equals six cosine theta, and a theta is less than or equal to pi over two, bigger than or equal to zero, and uh, re uh, revolve with respect to polar axis. If I uh, revolve, it, revolve it polar axis, so you're going to have 
r prime equals six sine theta. If it's polar axis according to the formula, the area equals two pi f is six cosine times sine because the sine is from the formula. Two pi f, two pi f sine. So two pi f sine. And the square root of r square six cosine theta square plus the derivative square. So six sine to six theta square. As an active here. But if it's square, don't change anything here. Then the area is two pi times uh, from zero to power two. From zero to power two. So six cos six sine theta cosine theta multiply this is 36 take a square root is another 6 d theta so we can have 36 times uh, 2 pi which is 72 pi from 0 to pi over 2 which you got sine theta cosine theta d theta okay so can anyone tell me what do I do here. That's perfect, okay. You can do, thank you very much, we can change this one into sine theta d of uh, sine theta because cosine is d of sine okay and then we can use 72 pi this sine this is u you can use sine theta square over 2 plug 0 and a pi into it so it's the final answer 36 pi okay even for in case you don't know this you don't know oh I don't know this way you still can use the um, the double angle formula. You can do 72 pi, 0 to pi over 2, this is sine 2 theta over 2 d theta. So you can multiply the 2, 36 pi, from 0 to 2 pi over 2, you got a sine 2 theta d theta. So the answer is going to be 36 pi, negative cosine 2 theta over 2, plug in pi over 2, plug in 0. Okay. So I guess the final is 36 pi. You plug pi of 2 in here is negative cosine pi over 2. Minus minus is plus cosine 0 over 2. So the answer is going to be 36 pi negative 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 1 over 2 plus positive 1 half. This is 1 half plus 1 half. The answer is 36 pi as well. Okay. So either way can give you the final answer 36 pi. Okay, that's um, how you use the formula to do the surface uh, revolution area. So, um, uh, we will continue one more example tomorrow to finish this section of this revolution surface area to finish this section tomorrow. And then we're going to continue 10.6. We spend a long time on this section, actually, 10.5. But we have to do a little bit more on tomorrow and then tomorrow, then we do 10.6. We're done with the chapter 10. Thank you very much for coming today. Okay.